Alright, so today we're going to cover three fairly poorly misunderstood um, concepts in science. But they're also three really, really important ones. And without them, we're not doing science. So let's talk about reliability. Now we're talking about our experiments here. So, oh, and secondhand data actually for that matter. So when we talk about reliability, we're talking about the repeatability of measurements, results, observations. So if we come over here, right, we've got our... Zanatri consciousness. So that's going to be our, our, an analogy for today. So here is Archer 1. We'll give this Archer A actually. And here is Archer B. Now, Archer A is reasonably reliable. What we find is every time they take a shot, they're kind of grouping it together. Their results are reasonably repeatable. You can see that they're kind of all in the same area. Whereas Archer B over here is all over the place. These results are really unreliable. There's a wide variance in what they're getting when they're doing the same action. So over here it's the same action. It's drawing back the bow, firing or loosing the bow. Um, and we find that they're getting pretty much the same results. Over here, vastly different. Um, so reliability is measured okay not improved it's measured by repeating the experiments so over here we've got Archer C now Archer C has they have a sling or they have a, an arrow, a bow and arrow off they go they fire one we have no idea how reliable Archer C is they've only shown us once um, are they going to hit the same spot we don't know the next shot is here the next one is here and the next one is here so what we've measured with their reliability by repeating the experiment is how reliable they are. And it turns out Archer C, not super reliable. In comes Archer D. Also going to be a lot better shot. Um, they shoot one there. The next one flies. It hits there. Then we hit there. Then we hit there. So off this, off arrow one, we can't tell how reliable Archer D is. That might have been a fluke. But Archer D fires three more. And all of a sudden, we can see that Archer D is actually quite reliable. If, for example, we had have had Archer E come in, E fires there, just with one shot, we're like, Archer E's a genius, it's so good. Except their next shot is there, and then there, and then over here. And we start to see that Archer E is actually not that reliable at all. That might have been a fluke. Um, you can improve it, however, by using methods or equipment that are consistent from trial to trial. So we have our next archer come in, and their first round is over here, over here, over here, over here, and their fifth shot was that one there. Now it turns out that they tried a different technique each, each time they loosed an arrow. So when the, by trying a different technique each time, they've found that they're not very reliable. But they were paying very careful attention. So they got the one they wanted. They were, this is the most accurate. Let's do that same thing over and over and again. And here come the next few shots, and it turns out they're all pretty reliable. They improved their reliability by making sure they use the same technique over and over and over. All right. This is why we need to be very, very specific in our method. All right, so validity. Validity is essentially the extent that the data, so it's, it's basically, are you testing what you intended to test? So the, the results you collect, the data you collect, are, are those data showing what you intended to? So what this actually means is, well, did your results measure what you wanted to? Um, have you controlled your experiments, okay? So if we're, so here's, here's our, we'll go for another analogy over here. We'll go back to the purple that showed up a bit better there. All right, so here we are. We're hunky-dory, we're all flying along. Um, all mate steps up to the, to the archery range, and instead of bringing an arrow, a bow and arrow, she's bought throwing axes. So she's throwing her throwing axes, and throwing axes, pretty good. She hits there, she hits there, she hits there, she hits there. That's super reliable, super accurate. Unfortunately, it's an archery competition. She's both throwing axes. So 
it's not valid. So because she's bought her throwing access to an archery competition, she can be reliable as she wants, but it's not a valid test of her archery skills. So the way we do this is we control all variables except for the independent and dependent. Okay, and we only have one independent and one dependent variable, which means in an experiment you only change one thing and you only measure one thing. And the reason you only change one thing is because if we've got the pendulum swinging um, and it's going backwards and forwards, uh, we're trying to see what affects the, the period, the motion of it, um, and you change both the mass and the length of the pendulum, so you change the length and the mass. When you measure a change in the period, which is how long it takes to swing backwards and forwards, you're, you're not going to know whether it was the mass that affected it or the length that affected it. Or, on a worse level, you want to see the effect of the la length on the period, okay, which actually has a symbol for T, but we won't worry about that. You want to test that. If you're testing that and you've changed Instead of changing length, you change the mass only. If you change the mass, well, that's not going to be a very valid test on is the length affected. Okay. So, accuracy. Accuracy is how precise your measurements are. So, over here, so we've got Archer A. Super precise. Okay. We've got Archer B. They've got, let's change color so it makes sense. It's getting a bit long. Um, they've got one there, one there, and one there. So one of their shots was super accurate, but the other two weren't. Um, so it's how close your measurements are to the actual results. Uh, this includes your error margins. This is really important. So, for example, if we are measuring um, the uh, volume using a measuring cylinder, it'll say plus minus 0.1 milliliter. So because it's got that, what that actually means is our results, if we measure, say, 49 milliliters, our results are not 49 millimeters. They are 49 plus minus 0.1 milliliters. In other words, our results are somewhere between 48.9 to 49.1. That's our actual measurement. And we need to be really honest about that because we're scientists. Um, we can improve this by using more precise measurements. So uh, in chemistry, you won't use, you won't always use measuring cylinder. Sometimes you'll use a vol volumetric flask, which is a, a flask that has a, a calibrated line on there. And they, are, they tend to be accurate to 0 0.01 milliliters. So that's 10 times more accurate. Um, now you need to remember, an experiment can be reliable and not valid. So the equipment can fail at the same point every single time. Um, or it can be valid and not reliable. This A should be down there. Um, an experiment can be reliable but not and valid but not accurate. For example, if we are uh, back to our archery competition, so over here, over here, over here, this is reliable, okay? Because you know, it's all in the one side area. It's valid, but it's not accurate. Okay. Then we've got this one here. They get one there, one there, one there, one there. This is reliable. Okay. It's all in the same area. It's accurate. It's precise. But she's using an axe, so it's not valid. Okay. Because it's an axe. All right. Okay. Then over here, we've got another archer who is there, there. The ideal is actually this one here, because we can correct. We if we if we know our results are off by this much, then we can correct in science. We can move it down. We can adjust for poor accuracy. What we can't adjust for is reliability and validity. Now, we need to know how to assess first-hand and second-hand investigations. So, so here are just a couple of questions I want you to ask every time you have a first-hand investigation or a second-hand investigation about reliability and validity. First off, have I tested with repetition? It doesn't improve your reliability, but what it will do is it will show you whether you're reliable or not. Are my tests repeatable? Can I do the same thing over and over again? Okay, if you can't, it's not going to be reliable. 
are the data presented from repeated experiments? So in the second investigation, if you find a bunch of data and it's not, it's not repeatable, then, sorry, it's not from repeated experiments, then it might not be reliable. You don't know. Um, and do the data match other reputable sources? This is a good sign that it might be reliable. It's not always. I mean, you, you could have a reliable experiment which has kind of found a new way to do things, that it, it's, it's, breaking a, it's breaking through, but then we have to wait for other people to repeat it. So validity. Does the experiment test the hypothesis? That's really important. Um, are all other variables controlled? We need to know this. Um, do the findings relate? So this is the second hand. Do the findings relate to my hypothesis or problem? You need to check it because sometimes they won't. All right, that's it. That was a long one. Thanks for hanging in there. See you later.